afternoon and welcome to Moments of Hope with yours truly, Pastor Curtis Robert Grant, Desire Hope Family. God bless you. And for those of you that will join along with us, God bless you. Uh, we're so glad to be alive today. Uh, for those of you that will join with us in the conference call, you can dial 515-606-5380. And then we have access code is 636090. <clears throat> and uh, we are still in the book of Exodus, chapter 34. And uh, I want to just read a few uh, things that you're hearing, probably redundant from what it was yesterday because we didn't get a chance to complete the thought. And so I want to kind of deal with that uh, to help you to continue to follow the flow of this uh, particular uh, piece of material. And so uh, starting at Exodus 34, 10, uh, and then I guess we'll start, we'll pick up, uh, start teaching, teaching at 14. It says, and he said, behold, I make a covenant. Behold, uh, before all the people I will do marvels, such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people amongst which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. <clears throat> Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorites and the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whether thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break down their images, and cut down their grooves. For thou shalt worship no other god. For God, for the God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. All right? Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods. And one call thee, and thou eateth of the sacrifice, and thou takest a daughter, uh, taketh of their daughters unto, unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. All right? Thou shalt make thee no molten image. All right? And so I pause right there uh, because you see God's concern here is first of all to drive out the other nations, all right, uh, that God wants to give Canaan to uh, uh, the Israelites and he wants to drive out every other inhabitant uh, because I want you to understand the power of peer pressure, all right, and this is what God is trying to eliminate for uh, his children. But when, when you go in and take the land, run out every other uh, nation or every other clan, every other uh, people that's in the land. Do not make a covenant with them. Do not hook up with them. Don't marry them. Don't, don't you marry them. Don't you allow them to marry you into your family. He says, run them out. He said, because if you don't, they're going to become a snare to you. All right? And uh, take heed to yourself. All right? Is what he's talking about. Because what God does here, and even though we don't see it in the midst of uh, these uh, covenant that he's making, God is trying to eliminate the peer pressure of outside cultures, all right? Because you have to understand that uh, peer pressure uh, simply is the pressure of, 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 of people, of individual cultures, all right, uh, uh, coming in and introducing other things to you that's different than your culture, all right? And you have to understand because we are such uh, social creatures, all right, we pick up bits and pieces of stuff as we go <clears throat> simply because there is something lacking within us, all right, uh, it's called identification. We don't know who we are. The problem we're uh, having is that we're struggling with our own personal identification. We don't know who we are, we're struggling with who we are, and so therefore uh, the devil uses that against us, all right? And you, and you got to see this because <clears throat> when you start talking about uh, uh, social pressure and you start talking about uh, uh, being conformed to this world, all right, the Bible wants to help us see that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And so the question now becomes, how can you be in the world and not of the world? Well, first of all, you have to realize that anytime you're in something, all right, you're going to end up picking up the pressures of what you're in. 
all right? The only way for you to not be uh, a, a part of something that you're in is that you have to know who you are. You got to be self uh, 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 empowered, if you will. That's a better word. All right? Because I think that what happens a lot of times is that we end up conforming to the world and to other clans and to other people because we don't know who we are. We're searching. And so we'll pick up bits and pieces because what we want is to be accepted in the crowds in which we drive. And so the devil knows that, all right? And so what he does is he attacks the family. That's why God ordains the family because God did not allow Adam and Eve to have children until they first was married, all right? And I think that we miss it because we're so busy out here doing our own thing, you see, uh, because at the end of the day, God is saying in those uh, 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 pieces of scripture is that before you bring any children into this world, you need to have a commitment uh, 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 with the person that you are uh, thinking about having a baby with, all right? Because at the end of the day, what I need is for the mother and the father to be a part of that child's life. So that that child grows up knowing who he is, knowing what his culture is, knowing what uh, 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 he is all about as a child. All right. And when you and when you see the breakdown of the family, what you see is that the devil is destroying it because uh, 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 we well, first of all, we violate the word of God. All right. And we're going about just doing what we want. We're having babies out of wedlock. And saints, let me tell you something. I'm not trying to talk against anybody that has had babies out of work a lot because at the end of the day, if you've done it, it's done. That's water under the bridge. But what I'm trying to point out is, is that it's happening. And every time you have a child out of wedlock and don't have a father and the mother there to raise that child, that child becomes a fresh uh, pile of clay for the conformity of the world because they don't have the power in this household to tell them who they are so that when they walk outside of that door, they know who they are and they don't have to conform to the people around them, all right? Because at the end of the day, the devil knows that when you allow a man, all right, to be a part of that family and that son comes up, all right, that son holds his daddy in high esteem and that daddy has the power to mold that child into the man he should be, all right? But when you take the daddy out of the equation, all right, then who molds the child? The world in which he lives. He sees all kinds of stuff, and you look, and you watch, you know, the cultures of which we, we watch on TV, you find that the reflection of what we see on the TV actually shows up in our culture, and the devil knows it, and that's why he keeps us, he keeps our kid before the stupid tube, uh, he keeps our kids before the TV, and we're coming up with these images, we're coming up with our pants all down below our behinds, you know, uh, with these big old chains on, I ask if that's the real uh, 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 significance of prosperity. But let me tell you something. I'd rather have a peace of mind than have a piece of chain. All right? Because at the end of the day, when you don't know who you are, all right, when you have no idea, you know, what God has created you to be, then you become whatever the world presents to you. And that's the problem we're having out here is that the, there's a breakdown in the family. There ain't no mamas, ain't no daddies, all right? And then kids are confused because they want their mama and their daddy to love them. And their mama and their daddy don't have much time for them. And guess what? Who raised the children, all right? Your TV, all right? Because all you want is go sit and, and watch TV because you don't want to spend no time with them. You don't want to show them uh, who they are. And so they end up being molded by the world in which they live. And then when they get 17, you wonder what happened. Well, the truth of it is, the Bible says, train, train up a child in the way that it's go. And when he is old, he shall not depart. We forgot to train because we're so busy trying to live our own life, to live our own best life, that when our kids finally get 16 and 17, they got their own mind. But it's too late to try to train them now because you should have done that at two, all right? You follow what I'm saying? And so now that they out there, they out there wide open, the world is conforming them. The Lord, the world and the devil is shaping them, all right? Because we as parents have failed to do our jobs. And I didn't say y'all, I said we, all right? Because, you know, I think that every parent does the best he can. And even if I, you know, uh, 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 you know, even if I uh, falter in trying to raise my child, all right? It will not be because I'm not there to raise my child, okay? I'm going to do the best I can. 
to make sure that my child grows up to be and have everything he needs. It won't be because I'm not there, okay? And so at the end of the day, that's what the devil does, and he does it, I mean, he does it so quickly because what he does is he, he thrives on our emotion. Let me tell y'all something. Love ain't got much to do with how you feel. Let me just put that out there. And I'm gonna, I, I don't know why the Lord got me here today, but I'm going to drive this bus. Love ain't got much to do with how you feel, all right? Let me tell you something. Love is a commitment, all right? Because if you look at this, God is love, am I right? All right? And so ask yourself this question. How many times have you made God feel bad because of your actions? All right? But God keeps waking you up every morning. He keeps feeding you. He keeps clothing you. He does everything he needs to do. All right? So when you look at the real definition of love, the real definition of love is commitment in spite of how you feel. Which means that if I apply that to my relationship, then I don't always feel good about my wife. And God knows she don't always feel good about me. But the truth of it is, we're committed to it. All right? We ain't going nowhere, and I think that's why a lot of people got divorce on their mind, because you go into the doggone uh, relationship saying, if it don't work, I can always get out. Ain't no out. All right? And that's the problem with most relationships. You have already created a back door. All right? Because if you come in the front door and it don't work, you're going out the back door. Take the back door out, because at the end of the day, if we can't work it out in this house, then guess what? I'm not coming to a house where I got to fight every day, so therefore we're going to have to sit down, work this thing out, so that we don't have to come home and fight. We can have peace in our house, because guess what? I ain't going nowhere, and, and I pray to God that you don't go nowhere. See, you take away the power to actually work out your stuff in your relationships. And so the devil has used how we feel to destroy our families. Our kids out here, they just help, are just out here just swinging in the wind. Because we as a family has failed our children, all right? And God is saying to us in this text, look, when you get in the land, don't make no covenant with none of them, all right? Don't get hooked up with none of them, all right? Stay as a family. Stay as a nation, all right? Because I have given you specific things to follow, and you are not like every other nation. And if you start making covenant with other nations, they're going to bring their ideas, they're going to bring their culture, they're going to bring their gods, all right, all into what's, what's yours, and you're going to be confused now because you have not followed the command that I gave to you, all right? And so at the end of the day, the devil is doing a good job, and we got to be we got to be knowledgeable of what's going on. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, peace, uh, powers, and and, and 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 wickedness in high places. All right, and so you got to see what's going on out here. All right, the devil is at work. All right, and we got to train up our children. All right, train them. All right, because when they get old, then you can sit back and watch them grow. Okay, because at the end of the day, we all have to do this uh, as parents. All right, uh, verse sixteen says, um, "Thou uh, uh, and thou taken of thy daughters unto thou unto thy sons, and their daughters go a horn after their gods, and make thy sons go a horn after their gods." In other words, when you make those relationship connection. Uh, it, uh, might I submit, might I submit, relationships can be some of the baddest things that we encounter because we want so much to be loved. And when our mama and our daddy don't give us the love we desire, we go out and find it elsewhere. And so the devil sends all kinds of relationships uh, uh, that are opposite of what our culture is, all right? And we just connect to them because we just want somebody to love us. All right, and uh, God is trying to prevent us from the hurt because the more we connect with other people, all right, and other people who are not of our culture, the further we get away from our God. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, 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 when, you, when you look at us down south, okay, I hate the fact that we was in slavery, we were in uh, uh, poverty, uh, and we had a life down there that caused us to do a lot of suffering. But it was the suffering that kept us close-knitted, all right? It was our family, all right? And that's all we had. We held on to our families because we didn't have much, all right? But, uh, but the one thing we had in that family is we had God. And every Sunday, 
We didn't have, wasn't no question about it. Everybody in the house was going to church, all right? You understand what I'm saying? And that's what kept our family tight-knit. Me, my brothers, uh, Leroy, uh, Deborah, Theo, uh, we were tight-knit, all right? Because my mama didn't allow us to fight in the family, all right? She raised us together. She said, when I die, the one thing I need to know, and I need y'all to know, that y'all are all y'all got. And that's how she raised us. That's how she taught us. All right? And so what I'm saying is, is that we're still a family to this day because of the way she raised us. All right? And you've got to understand, brothers and sisters, that when you start looking at the people down south, all right, the way they were raised, they didn't have much, but what they focused on was family. But then when you bring those same families up north and put them in factories and let them make money that they ain't never had before, what you see is the breakdown of the family because we're so busy trying to get stuff that we don't nurture the family anymore. And therefore, the breakdown of the family happens when we start going after materialism. All right? And what you see that is that the struggle of, of, of the families that are up north are not the same struggle as those people are down south. All right? And what I'm trying to tell you, it's got something to do with money. For the love of money is the root to all evil. All right? And the devil knows it. All right? Because... Even when you don't have money, you still love it. And therefore, you'll work in that doggone uh, factory uh, five days in a row, all right, with no break, trying to get that cheddar, all right? But your family and your kids ain't seen you in five days, all right? And they all they want is their daddy. All they want is their mama. But we're so busy working that we don't take care of the children. And saints, I'm saying this and I'm closing. That's why most parents at Christmas buy all of that junk because they already know that during the year they didn't spend no time with their, with their babies. And so they're trying to make up for it when Christmas comes. All right? But let me tell you something. You can buy them every gift you want to buy them. All right? But what you cannot give to them as a gift under the tree is your idea, your God, your culture, your understanding of who you are, all right? That comes from you. And if you don't give it to them, you can't buy it and put it under the tree. And so that's what God is trying to help us all understand. Socialism is important. And we got to first of all socialize our children in our households so that when they go outside, they already got a sense of confidence of who they are. They don't have to, they don't have to gravitate towards nobody because I know who I am. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm, I know I'm a man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't have to be guessing whether, you know, I'm a, I'm a mm -hmm, mm -hmm, man or woman. I don't have to guess that, all right? Because my daddy made sure that I knew who I was, all right? And so at the end of the day, y'all, we're struggling out here because the family is breaking down and it's, it's breaking down even so more every day uh, in this world because we don't really think about it. We just out here just doing what we want to do. And God is saying, listen, man, I'm trying to save y'all from yourselves. But we ain't listening. We're doing what we want to do. And I'm trying to teach what little bit I know. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. Don't get it twisted. All right? I'm just saying I read the Bible. God helps me to understand so that I can be better. All right? I'm not just throwing this at y'all. I'm not just preaching this at y'all. This is stuff I'm learning. I'm learning for myself so that I can be a better man and hopefully my family can be a better family. But I'm just saying, saying I'm sharing with y'all. All right? And sometimes I get revelation the same time y'all get revelation. But thank God he still gives it to us, and we use that knowledge to try to be better people, to try to build better families, to try to do better by our people and our children so that they can have a better chance of surviving in their future. All right? God bless you and keep you. If you want to give your life to the Lord today, you can inbox us your name and phone number, and our membership academy will get back with you as soon as possible. And then don't forget, at 1 o'clock every day, we are praying. All right? Uh, because we need to pray for our president, <clears throat> pray for him. Um, uh, Trump has really been on my heart, and so uh, I want you to lift him up in prayer. And listen, saints, I don't want you to be ugly towards him, okay? Because at the end of the day, y'all, you know, uh, power, listen, I heard somebody tell me, absolute power destroys absolutely, all right? And so at the end of the day, 
you, you don't know how you get caught up. It's so easy to get caught up. It's so easy. And if I get away with it and y'all let me get away with it, it's so easy to get caught up. All right? But let me tell you something. I can guarantee you one thing. Ain't nothing done without the ordained uh, uh, hand of God. Everything that is done, all right, God knew it was going to happen. He put it in order, all right, so that it could be happened, all right, because everything that happened is bringing us to an expected end, all right? And so pray for him. Pray for his family, all right? Uh, lift him up because this is one of the tests that God puts before us that love our enemy. All right? And that's the thing we got to do is got to lift him up, pray for him. And for any other person that you may not like or dislike, all right, lift them up. It is the test of your Christianity. It is the test of your relationship with God. All right? We got to get off of this horse of hating our dislike. All right? We got to get off that horse. All right? Because that horse is going down the wrong street. All right? And so I'm saying for anybody that you have issues with, pray for them. All right? That the Lord will soften your heart that you would renew that relationship so that God can be glorified in your life. Cover us with your blood. All right? Let us look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for this privilege and opportunity, Lord, just to hear your word. We ask now that you season these words with your wisdom, that you will take this um, humble presentation, use it to your glory. Cover us with your blood, oh God, more so than anything else. But help us to learn the very things we need to learn in order to, for us to function, that we might be the wonderful acts and works of the you in this world so that people will see that your power and your glory is something that is to be praised. Cover us with your blood, and we'll be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.